Oh, the victory over Georgia certainly stands out. And I'll tell you the major reason why, because that really started a decade of great football between two great rivals. Georgia and Clemson, through the 80s, played five victories each, and there was one tie. Man, oh man, oh man, you talk about football. It didn't matter where the game was played, whether it was at Clemson or whether it was at Georgia and Sanford Stadium. It was always a hard, hard football game. So I would say that the Georgia game that season certainly got them going. Let's go back to 1981, the year Clemson rose to the top of college football by winning the national championship. It's September 19, 1981. A cold Canadian high pressure system has dipped into the south leaving the Gulf and South Atlantic states with fair, dry, and unseasonably cool weather. At Clemson, South Carolina, Danny Ford's Clemson Tigers are set to host the defending national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs of Vince Dooley, on a clear day. The temperature at kickoff time is 69 degrees. There's a wind blowing from the northwest at 11 miles an hour. It's an ideal afternoon for a showdown between the best of the ACC versus the best of the SEC. It will certainly become one of Clemson's greatest games. Throughout the tailgate community, it's been rumored that the Tigers will come out in purple pants, but Danny Ford's Tigers enter the field adorned in their all orange uniforms. Clemson captains Tony Berryhill, Jeff Bryan, and Cliff Austin win the opening toss, and the Tigers want the football first. George's Kevin Butler kicks off for the Bulldogs, and he sends the opening kick two yards deep into the end zone. Kevin Mack receives, thinks about it, then wisely decides to down it for a touchback. Clemson opens with a split backfield and three wideouts. Homer Jordan gives to Jeff McCall, who goes three yards to the 23. Linebacker Tommy Thurston and nose guard Eddie Meat Cleaver Weaver stops him there. Cliff Austin takes the second down handoff, and he's tumbled at the 25 for a gain of two. It's third and five for the Tigers. Jordan rolls right, keeps it, but he can only make it upfield for a yard. Thurston again makes the stop for the Dogs, and the Tigers will be forced to punt. Dale Hatcher, a freshman, will come on to kick for the Tigers. Georgia sends Steve Kelly back deep. It's a high snap, but Hatcher fields it and kicks it to the Bulldog 37. Against Tulane, Hatcher had one go over his head for a safety, so Clemson averts early disaster. The Clemson crowd loves its defense, and the excitement spreads as Georgia with sophomore sensation Herschel Walker comes to the line. Buck Ballou takes the snap and gives to Walker. He goes off left tackle, and William Devane and Jeff Davis stops him at the 41, a gain of three. It's second and seven. Walker lines up in the eye. Ballou hands it to Herschel again. He stumbles to the 43 after Hollis Hall and Terry Kennard trip him up. It's third and five for Georgia. Georgia has two tight ends, and Ballou rolls left. It's a quick snap, and Ballou trips, rolling left. Jeff Triplett and Andy Hedden penetrate for the Tigers. Hedden knocks Ballou down for an eight-yard loss back on the Georgia 35. Dooley sends in Jim Broadway for the first Bulldog punt of the afternoon. Broadway punts it down the field. Billy Davis takes it at the 27, and he loses a yard back to the 26. Clemson will start there, the exact spot where they ended their initial drive of the afternoon. Jordan takes the snap and he options right. He pitches to Austin who moves it to the 30. Thurston makes the tackle for the Dogs. Bulldog linebacker Nate Taylor is injured on the play which momentarily stops the action. Jordan lines the Tigers up in the eye. He gives to Austin off left tackle and he fights to the 32. Jimmy Payne slams him down there. It's third and four for the Tigers. Jordan wants to discuss the third play with the Clemson staff and calls timeout. The Tigers come out in the eye. He keeps left, dances to the Bulldog defense. Safety Jeff Kelly brings him down at the 44. It's a gain of 12 and the first, first down of the game. It was a keeper all the way for the shifty Clemson quarterback. First and 10 from the 44. Clemson has split backs. Jordan looks right, then throws left to Kendall Alley for a gain of 15. First down at the 41 of the Bulldogs. The Tigers line up in the eye this time. Jordan takes the snap, options right. 
but the ball is knocked loose. He was hit as he was trying to pitch it. Nate Taylor, who left a few plays ago, is back in and recovers the fumble at the Georgia 45. Not only does a promising drive come to an end, but the dogs now have excellent field position. Ballou gives to who else? Herschel, who goes left this time for five to midfield. Joe Glenn hits him first, and Terry Kennard pushes him out of bounds at the 50. It's second and five from the 50, and the Bulldogs go back to Walker. Herschel goes right on the pitch. He's finally pulled down on the 45. William Perry and Jeff Bryant finally break him down. He was hit in the backfield by Glenn, but he's tough to bring down, and he just slid off the initial hit. It's Georgia's first first down. The dogs are in their eye, and Walker goes off left tackle, spins back. He was hit at the line of scrimmage by Jeff Davis, but he fights for five more. Blue pitches to Walker left. He has a gap, and he goes down to the 27. Terry Kennard finally shoulders him down at the 28. It's an 11-yard game. Blue gives this time to fullback Ronnie Stewart, who gets three to the 28. Walker has carried on six of the nine Georgia plays. Norris is in a tailback for Walker. He gets down to the 24. It's third and six. Blue rolls right and completes it to Barry Young for seven to the 17. A first and 10 for Georgia. The dogs are threatening to take the lead, and it is time for the Clemson defense to exert itself. Walker is coming back into the lineup on first down. Blue pitches left to Walker. He gets outside and fights to the 11, but the Tigers knock the football loose from Herschel there. Terry Kennard makes the big hit. The ball pops out, and strong safety Jeff Suttle recovers it before it rolls out of bounds. A huge play by the Clemson defense. Walker was hit in the 11, and the ball rolled back to the 12. The ball is officially spotted between the 12 and 13. Jordan lines the Tigers in the eye. He gives to Kevin Mack, and Tommy Thurston is there to bring Mack down for virtually no gain. The Tigers split receivers and line up in the eye. Austin makes it just beyond the 15. Nate Taylor stops him there. It's third and eight. Jordan splits his backs, takes the snap, and hands to Mack. He's thrown back to the 11 for a four-yard loss. Dale Hatcher checks into punt. He's midway back into the end zone. It's a good snap and he hits it high. Kelly takes it in zone 44, brings it back to midfield, and the Tigers knock the ball loose again. It's Ray Brown reaching out and knocking the ball loose from Kelly as he crosses the 50. Ray also jumps on the loose ball. It's at midfield, first and 10 for the Tigers. Homer Jordan rolls around left end. He picks up four to the 46. We're paying tackles in for the dogs. There's a flag on the field. It's clipping against the Tigers. The referee will mark off 15 yards from the spot of the foul, moving it all the way back to the 39 of Clemson. It'll be first and 21 from there. Homer will have to go to the air now, and he looks for Alley on his first down pass. Alley looks as if he caught it, but it apparently skips in there. It's incomplete. Second and 21 from the 39. Jordan lines the Tigers in the split backs. Jordan swings it to Chuck McSwain in the right flat. It's a short gain of four. It's third and 17 with 3.43 to go in the first quarter. Jordan rolls left, then goes right. He has to run, and he gets to the 47. Tommy Thurston chases him down after a gain of four. It's third and 13, and Hatcher comes in for his third punt of the first quarter. Kelly awaits the kick on the 10. It hits on the 20 and starts to roll down the field. The Tigers encircle the ball, but they cannot down it. It squirts into the end zone. It's a 53-yard punt. Georgia takes over at the 20 instead of the 1. Just over three minutes to go in the opening quarter. Ballou gives to walk around right end for a couple of yards. Dan Benish is there to bring him down at the 22. Hollis Hall is also there to help corral Walker. Too tight set. Ballou rolls left. He throws into a crowd, and Georgia's Clarence Key makes the grab. He battles hard to the 36, but there's a flag on the field. This time, it's on Georgia, an ineligible receiver downfield. That'll bring the ball all the way back to the 11-yard line. It's also a loss of down. It's third and 19. Blue will play it safe and give to Walker on a delay. He goes to the 19. 
Bill Smith tackles him there. It's Bill's first action of the year. He was injured in August drills and makes his first defensive play of the season. Broadway takes the snap at his five and punts a beauty. Davis goes all the way back to the 20 yard line. He goes to his right, regains some yardage, and he gets to the 27. It's a 56 yard punt. Clemson starts at the 26 one more time. Jordan rolls left and finds Frank Magwood open. George is so concerned with Perry Tuttle that it leaves Magwood with one on one coverage. He brings it to the 43, a 17 yard gain, the longest of the first quarter. It's first and 10 from the Clemson 43. Split backfield. Jordan rides it to fullback McCall, and he makes a pair before Stan Dooley stops him at the 45. There are 45 seconds left in the quarter. Homer is having a good quarter throwing. He's three of four for 35 yards. Walker has seven carries for 37 for the dogs. Homer hits Alley again. He's open on the slant. There's no Georgia defender within three or four yards. He takes it to the Georgia 39 for a gain of 16. Nine seconds to go in the quarter. Jordan has them in the eye. He rolls left. He keeps it for only a yard. Dooley on the stop for the dogs. And that's the end of the first quarter. It'll be second and nine from the Georgia 38 when the second quarter begins. In the first quarter, each team had drives stopped by fumbles. George is coming when the Tigers knocked the ball loose from Walker on the 11, which was recovered by Jeff Suttle. It was a major momentum swing in the first quarter. Memories. The second fumble came on a punt a few minutes later, which reversed the field position for the remainder of the first quarter. Both teams relied on ball control and field position. The importance of this field position switch. Second quarter. It's second and nine from the 38. There's no score after a quarter of play. The Tigers are in a split backfield. Jordan rolls right. He sees Magwood open and hits him on the hitch pattern for a 15 yard gain to the 23. It's the fifth first down for the Tigers. Georgia has three. McCall takes it on the dive and he powers to the 19. It's a four yard gain. Dooley on the top for the dogs. Split backs again. Jordan checks off and hands it to Austin. He's tumbled at the 17 by Jimmy Payne. It's third and five. It's just inside the 18. Jordan puts Tuttle in motion. There's a flag as Jordan rolls left and fires to Tuttle for a first to the nine. Clemson is in motion, however, and that moves it back to the 23. Tuttle had the first. It'll be third down and 10. Jordan splits his backfield. Tuttle in motion again. He rolls left and finds Magwood open on the 12. He's hit immediately. Is it complete in a fumble or an incompletion? It's a fumble, and Carver recovers for Georgia. Magwood is hurt in the play and has to be helped off the field. That's the fourth turnover of the game, two for each side. The ball is officially marked at the 12, 13-10 to go in the half. The dogs go left. There is some running room, but Rod McSwain and Jeff Davis are there for the tackle after a gain of six. It's second and four, and Blue gives to Walker off right tackle for only a yard. Clemson's All-American Jeff Davis hits him hard to make it third down and three. It's Herschel time again, and the Georgia Star runs around left end for six, and a first down at the 25. Benish makes the tackle for Clemson. It's first down, and Ballou is faking to his fullback and looking to pass. It's intercepted by Terry Kennard at the 37. He brings it back to the 18. Clemson's defense does it again, setting up the offense in great field position. That's the third Georgia turnover. Two fumbles and now an interception. It's Kennard's third interception of the year. Clemson's in the eye. Jordan pitches it right to McSwain. He battles down to the 13. A pickup of five. Split backs on second down. Jordan rides McCall and fumbles it back to the 15. McSwain recovers for Clemson. It was an option play. 
Huddle in motion on third. Jordan goes left. Hemmed in, finds a small seam, and weaves his way to the 12. It's fourth down. Bob Pauling checks in for a 29-yard field goal try. He kicks it, but it's sailing right. Georgia holds, and the Bulldogs take over with 9.36 to play. Clemson misfires, and Georgia escapes without the Tigers being able to take advantage of the Kennard interception. Ballou pitches to Walker round left in. Hollis Hall races up from his corner spot and throws Walker for a loss of five. That's something that doesn't happen very often. Walker being dragged down for negative yards. Danny Triplett is in there also. Ballou has Lindsey Scott in motion. Blue rolls left, throws in a crowd. It's intercepted by Tim Childers and brought back to the 18. The same spot the Tigers took over after the last interception. There's a flag on the play. The call is ineligible receiver down the field for Georgia. Finish was in there, forcing Blue's errant toss. It's the fourth turnover of the first half for Georgia, and the Tigers really need to take advantage of this one. First and 10 for Clemson from the 18. Jordan gives to Mack off right guard. Not much running room there as Meet Cleaver Weaver clogs up the middle. A yard gain. It's second down and nine. Jordan rolls left. He finds a gap in the Georgia defense and picks up seven just inside the 10. Third down and a yard and a half from the 10. Thurston makes yet another tackle for the dog defense. Key third down for the Tigers. Mack pulls over left guard for two and a first down to the eight. They measure it, but he's guided by the length of the football. It's first and goal for Clemson. The Tigers are going airborne on first down. Jordan rolls right, looks for his favorite receiver, Perry Tuttle. He's open in the corner of the end zone. It's a touchdown, Clemson. What a catch by Tuttle. An All-American reception if you'll ever see one. 7-13 left in the first half, and the Tigers are on the scoreboard first. Pauling comes in for the PAT, and he kicks it through. Clemson 7, Georgia 0. The Nigerian wonder booms it through the end zone for a touchback. Georgia will take over at its own 20-yard line. George is going back to the air. He play actions to Walker, rolls right. The two interceptions by Ballou doesn't seem to bother him as he completes a 14-yarder to fullback Ronnie Stewart out to the 34. Hollis Hall gets the tackle for the Tigers there. Ballou is passing again, looking for tight end Norris Brown. Kennard is there for the coverage. Ballou was rolling left on that throw, and the Tigers had four defenders near the football. I formation, Ballou drops back and the ball just rolls out of his hand when he cocks his arm. The officials say fumble and Bill Smith falls on the loose ball in the 21. That's turnover number five for the Bulldogs. Homer Jordan and company come to the line in the eye. He pitches right to Austin. He sweeps, but he can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Terry Hogue stops him there. A loss of one. Second and 11. Split backfield behind Jordan. Tuttle is split left. Jordan straight back and he throws for Tuttle near the goal line. He throws between two defenders, but it's incomplete. Tuttle has to come out with a jam finger. It's third down and 11. Jordan splits the backs and goes straight back. He's chased in the backfield. George's Dooley and Payne are all over him. It's a loss of 11 yards, a big play for Georgia. Igwe BK is in to try a 51-yard field goal. He has the leg as he showed him the kickoff a few minutes ago. It's a bad snap over everyone's head. It goes all the way back to the Clemson 40. What a break for Georgia. The Bulldogs start in their eye with Walker lined up behind Ballou and Stewart. Walker takes the handoff behind the right guard, but Benish hammers him down for no gain. Blue takes the snap, 
play actions, rolls left, is chased out of bounds at the 36 by Jeff Bryant. They'll mark it at the 37. Third down and seven for the Bulldogs. Blue has him in the I formation. He's back to throw. Throws to Walker coming out of the backfield. He catches it, but Danny Triplett is there to tackle him for two yards. Triplett was with him all the way, and he tackles him hard. Kevin Butler's in for a 52-yard field goal try. He definitely has the leg to make it from that distance. His kick has the distance, but it's fading right. No good. And the Tigers retain their 7-0 lead. There's only 3.41 left in the first half. Clemson will take over at the 35. What a job by the Clemson defense. Jordan keeps right and battles near the 38. It's third down and seven for the Tigers. Split backfield, Tuttle in motion. Jordan gives to Kevin Mack, and he's near a first down. Kelly tackles him for the dogs. It's about a foot short of a first. Jordan has Clemson in the eye. He goes straight ahead. Homer moves the chains. First down at the 46. First down, 245 and a half. Split backfield. McSwain and Mack behind Jordan. He drops straight back. He looks for Kendall Alley. The ball is thrown out of Kendall's reach. Good coverage by Dale Williams of Georgia. It's second and 10 from the Clemson 46. 221 as tie becomes a factor in the first half. Strong eye right. Jordan rolls left. There's a big Georgia rush. He escapes some of the pressure, but they flush Homer out of the pocket. His knee touches at the 45, a loss of one for the Tigers. Big third and 11. Jordan on the delay, gives to Mack. Nothing developing there. Georgia is all over this one. Hatcher is back on his 31. He hits another beauty, a high hanger. It hits at the five and goes into the end zone. Johnny Rimmer pops Kelly Hart. That's going to be a personal foul penalty on the Tigers. It'll move the ball to the 27. First and 10 for Georgia there. Exactly one minute left in the half. Georgia will play it safe by giving it to Herschel. Walker goes off right tackle to the 34, and Jeff Davis gets in there. Third down and three. George is in the eye, and the clock is running out in the half. Walker goes off left tackle. There's a fumble. Walker never seems to have gotten a grip on the ball. William Perry has it for Clemson with 29 seconds to go in the half. It'll be marked at the 34. That's Walker's second fumble of the half, the sixth Georgia turnover of the half. Jordan rolls right, keeps it down to the 28. A gain of six for a homer. Ronnie Harris runs him out of bounds. There's 22 seconds left in the half. Clemson's in the eye. Jordan hands to Austin off left tackle. Cliff gets a first at the 22-yard line. Steve Kelly makes the tackle for Georgia. Clemson uses its final timeout of the first half. Just 16 seconds to go in the second quarter. Danny Ford will call on Igwe Bike to try a 39-yard field goal. The kick is straight down the middle. With 11 seconds left in the half, it's Clemson 10, Georgia 0. Igwe Bike kicks off again. This one goes through the end zone and lands six rows back among the fans. Time for one final play for Georgia in the half. Blue will give to his fullback, Stewart. He bounces off right tackle. Benish penetrates and stops him for a yard loss. It was a defensive struggle, highlighted by hard hits, field position, and turnovers. Georgia only had 69 yards in total offense in the first half. Clemson had managed 119 with 86 coming via the air. Homer Jordan was 7 of 10 in the first half. Clemson had managed only 33 yards rushing on 32 carries. Walker had 56 yards in the first half on 15 carries, but his two fumbles were costly. One stopped a first quarter Georgia drive at the 11, and the second set up Clemson's field goal right before the half. Blue had been intercepted twice in seven pass attempts, and he'd fumbled once. 
The second half begins with Georgia set to receive the kickoff. The Tigers are ahead in this one 10 to nothing thanks to a savvy defense, strong kicking game, and six Bulldog turnovers. Igwe Bike kicks off again, and his kick sails into the end zone for a touchback. You know Vince Dooley, the National Coach of the Year in 1980, has his Bulldogs ready to mount a second half surge. On the first play, Ballou rolls to his right. He takes to the air and finds tight end Norris Brown for 11 yards and a first down at the 31 yard line. Childers, who had a first half interception, brings him down for the Tigers. The dogs go back to their top dog, Herschel Walker, and the sophomore sensation rips off right tackle for nine more to the 40. Danny Triplett brings him down after he bowls over a couple of defenders. It's second and one for Georgia. The Tigers are looking for Walker, but Ballou gives to fullback Ronnie Stewart, who speeds ahead for nine more, and a first down at the 49. Childers stops him there. It's the second first down of the drive for Georgia. Ballou lines them up in the eye, and he gives to Herschel. Walker finds a gap at left end, and he almost is off to the races. He rips off 21 yards before cornerback Anthony Rose corrals Walker at the Tiger 30-yard line. It's the third first down for Georgia this half. The Dogs could only manage five the entire first half. Ballou out of the eye, play actions, and goes to Brown. Childers, who's everywhere for the Tigers, is there to defend. It's incomplete, second and 10 for the Dogs from the 30-yard line. After a Georgia timeout, it's time for Blue to give back to Herschel. But Jeff Bryant clogs up the right side of the offensive surge and batters Walker down for no gain. It's third and 10, and the Clemson defense is trying to stiffen. Blue puts Scott in motion to the left. Blue rolls that way and throws to his favorite target, Lindsey Scott. He's open, takes in the blue pass, and maneuvers down to the 16, a 14-yard gain, and another Georgia first down. Childers is there to bring Scott down. It's Georgia's deepest threat since fumbling in the first quarter. Blue out of the eye, gives to Walker on first down, but the Tigers stack him up at the right guard. It's no game. Bryant gets credit for the tackle with an assist from most of his orange-clad friends. On second down, Ballou looks for Brown. He's wide open at the four, but he drops it. No doubt that probably would have been six. It's incomplete. It's another third down opportunity for both sides. Ballou takes the snap and looks for Scott. Dan Benish breaks free and traps Ballou for an eight yard loss. The sack pushes Georgia back to the 24 and will force a field goal try by Kevin Butler. What a great stand by the Clemson defense and another key play by Benish. Jeff Bryant was back there also. Butler's 40 yard try is up and true and George is finally on the board. Clemson still leads though. It's 10-3 Tigers. And there's 11.04 left in the third quarter. Georgia held the ball for 11 plays and three minutes and 56 seconds. Butler kicks off for only the second time this afternoon. His kick goes nine yards deep into the end zone for a touchback. Clemson will take over on its own 20-yard line. Jordan feeds it to fullback McCall, but meet Cleaver Weaver, plugs up the line, and the Tiger fullback pushes ahead for a gain of only two. It's second down and eight from the 22. Jordan rolls right, keeps it himself. He finds a small opening and picks up five more to the 27. Harris makes the stop for Georgia. It's third and three for the Tigers. It's a possession down, and McCall gets the call off right tackle. Dooley and Payne are there for Georgia, stopping Jeff after a gain of only one. Clemson will have to punt. Hatcher comes in, and he hits a boomer. Kelly takes it in for Georgia at the 17. He brings it back to the 29 for a 12-yard return. 
Hatcher's punt is officially 55 yards and good for a net of 43 after the return. Georgia's offense continues to open it up in the second half. Blue play actions to Walker, rolls left and fires to Norris Brown. It's a gain of 18 and a first down at the 47. Triplett, Kennard, and Childers stop the Bulldog tight end there. It's another first down for the Dogs. Walker gets the blue handoff on first down, but he's met behind the line by Triplett. It's a loss of one, but there's a flag on the field. Illegal procedure on Georgia. That'll move it back to the 42 and make it first down and 15. Walker takes the blue handoff and goes right up the middle of the Clemson defense. Jeff Davis brings him down after a gain of six and makes it second and nine from the 48. Walker gets the call again on second down and Herschel rips it off left side for seven more. Rod McSwain stops him at the Clemson 45, two yards shy of a first down. It's a critical third and two and everyone among the 63,200 knows who will get it on this clutch possession down. Walker hits right tackle, but Triplett leads the defensive charge, and the Tigers jolt Walker down for no game. Dooley will have to send Broadway into punt. The Clemson defense has held. Broadway's kick goes 45 yards and into the end zone. The Tigers continue to lead 10-3 with 7.26 left in the third quarter. Jordan leads the Tiger offense to the line and he's going to pass on first down. He finds Tuttle open again for a gain of 19 to the 39. Steve Kelly makes the tackle for Georgia, but it's a big first down for the Tigers. Jordan hands to fullback Mack on first down. He's bowled backwards after only a one yard gain. Taylor and Weaver are there for the dogs. Second and nine now, and Homer is going back to the air. He has the Tigers in the eye with Tuttle in motion. He's looking for Tuttle again. He finds him open. It's a gain of 11 to the Georgia 49. It's first down Clemson. Dale Williams was in pursuit for the dogs. McSwain takes the first down handoff and stumbles forward for a couple to the 47. Crow knocks him down there, making it second down and eight for the Tigers. Jordan rolls and looks for Magwood, but he's covered by Kelly. It was in Magwood's grasp, but Kelly knocked it loose. The pass falls incomplete, leaving it at third down and eight for Clemson. Once again, Jordan has the Tigers in the eye. He's rolling right, looking deep for Magwood inside the five. He was defended by two defenders. There was missed coverage by Georgia, and Tuttle was uncovered on the 15. The pass is no good, and Danny Ford will have to send Hatcher back to punt. The drive did reverse field position, though, and in this game, field position means everything. Hatcher lost a 38-yard punt down to the 9-yard line. Kelly is back for Georgia, and he fair catches it there. Backed up against his own goal line, Dooley does the expected. He calls on Ballou to give it to Herschel. Clemson is waiting for number 34. Ray Brown knocks him down at the eight. It's a yard loss for the Dogs. It's second down and 11. Ballou is rolling left and looking for Scott. He's got him at the 17. Jeff Suttle stops him there a couple of yards shy of a first. It's third and a short two for a first down. Once again, it's Herschel time. And once again, the Clemson defense collapses the Georgia front. Finish and Suttle get the primary hits for Clemson and bring Walker down for a yard loss. It's fourth and three from the 16, and Broadway has to punt again. It's not one of his better kicks. Billy Davis catches the short punt and brings it back to the Georgia 45-yard line. Clemson has great field position with 3.21 left in the third quarter. Certainly, Danny Ford knows a touchdown or field goal will probably be enough for his Tigers to pull the upset over the defending national champions. Jordan lines up the Tigers. 
He'll go right, step behind the right side of the line, and net a yard at the 44. The meat cleaver clamps down on Homer there. McCall takes Jordan's handoff on second down, and he battles off right guard for three more to the 41. Payne gets the tackle for the Bulldogs, setting up a crucial third down conversion play. The ball had popped loose, but the whistle had blown McCall down. Jordan rolls to his left and looks for Tuttle. He finds Perry open, and he moves to the Georgia 32. First down, Clemson, and definitely in field goal range for Igwe Bike. Homer feels like Tuttle can get open any time on the Georgia defense, and he looks for him on first down. This one is incomplete, though. Tuttle was open, but the pass was just a little to his right. It's second and 10 for the Tigers. Jordan goes back to the ground, giving it to McCall, who bounces ahead to the 30. Carver tackles him there. It's third down and eight. Not much running room against the tough Georgia front. The clock is winding down on the third quarter. Maybe time for a play or two. Jordan isn't playing it safe. He's passing for Tuttle, complete for 10 more yards. Harris makes the tackle for Georgia at the 20. First down, Tigers. Jordan is now 11 of 17 passing. Clemson lines up for the final play of the quarter. Jordan gives it to McSwain. He batters ahead for three more to the 17. Taylor on the stop for Georgia. That'll end the third quarter as the final 19 seconds tick off the clock. It'll be second and seven from there when the fourth quarter begins. Third quarter recap. Georgia, having no success offensively in the first half, moved for a field goal on its first possession and seemed to grab the momentum. After moving to Clemson's 45 on its second drive, the Georgia offense couldn't crack the Tiger defense. After that, the Tigers regained control. Jordan's clutch passing and Tuttle's equally adept receiving helped change field position for Clemson. We start the fourth quarter with the Tigers facing second and seven from the Georgia 17-yard line. Jordan puts Tuttle in motion. He takes the snap and keeps it. He goes around right into the 12. It's a gain of five. Payne and Taylor on the tackle for the dogs. Clemson is now facing a third and two from there. Austin brings in the play from the sidelines. Jordan rolls left, will go to the air. He rolls and looks for tight end Jim Worst. The pass is partially deflected. Keith Hall, the defensive end, got a hand to tip it in the air. It is Igwe Bike time again. Danny Ford sends in his Nigerian wonder, and his 29-yard field goal attempt is up and dead center. Clemson has a 13-3 lead with 14.01 left in this battle for survival in the national championship chase of 1981. Igwe Bike is set to kick off, and this one will go to Herschel Walker, who's back to return a kick for the first time today. He'll be kicking into a wind. The ball goes to the one-yard line. The Georgia superstar heads back upfield, but Clemson defenders are waiting for him, and they knock him down on the 15. Leading the charge was Edgar Pickett. They wouldn't allow Herschel to get to the sidelines. It's first down, and Ballou will try to get Georgia back in the game by going to the passing game. His pass is complete to tight end Brown for a gain of five to the 20. Danny Triplett makes the stop there. Georgia wants to talk it over and takes a timeout. The dogs come back in the eye, and Blue shuffles it to Walker, but William Devane and Jeff Davis clog up the middle, and Herschel can get only two. It'll be third down and three from the 23. Blue feeds it to Walker again on third down, and Walker heads around left end. He's hit again by Devane, but he edges ahead for a Georgia first down at the 25. Tim Childers is also in on the play. Blue takes the first down snap and rolls to his right. He finds a small alley in the Tiger defense and moves to the 33. Childers comes up from the safety spot to stop him there. 
It'll be second and two for Georgia. It was good coverage, which forced Ballou to run, but he gets eight yards. It's Walker time again. And once again, Clemson's defense is there to repel him. Jeff Davis hammers him down a yard shy of a first down. The ball was knocked loose from Walker at the 35, but Herschel pounces back on it. That's the third time Herschel has fumbled, and the first time he got it back. Before today, he'd fumbled only one time in his career. Everyone will be looking for Walker on third and short, but Ballou play actions finds tight end Clarence K. They connect for nine yards and a first down at the 43. Terry Kennard makes the stop for the Tigers. Georgia is trying to regain momentum, and Walker's got running room, and he rips off seven yards off right tackle to the 50. It's second down and three. Fullback Young takes the handoff and dives off right guard for five more, and another Bulldog first down. The ball is spotted to Clemson 45. Smith brings Young down there. Blue's got the dogs in the eye formation. He's going to pass on first down. He's looking for Jones, but the pass is intercepted by Billy Davis at the 22. He'll be brought down on the Clemson 43. That's the seventh turnover of the game for Georgia and the first of the second half. There's a flag, but don't pay any attention to it. It's offsides on Georgia. Clemson takes over with 9.34 to go, and there's no doubt Danny Ford will work the clock. Homer Jordan is under center and rolls to his left. He keeps it to the 46, a three-yard game. Taylor on the tackle for Georgia. Second and seven, Jordan calls the signals and deals it to fullback McCall. He steps over left guard, surges ahead for three more to the 49. It's third down and four for the Tigers. A key possession down as the clock continues to tick down. Jordan will keep it again. He stays right, steps up field past the first down markers and a gain of six to the Georgia 45. Crow is credited with a tackle, but it's a first down Tigers. The Tigers continue to work the clock with 834 left in the game and leading 13 to three. Jordan checks the Georgia defense, takes the snap, and gives to Cliff Austin. There's not much running room to the left, but he does pick up three to the 42. Thurston makes the tackle there. Austin was hit in the backfield, but his strength enabled him to break a tackle for a loss, and he winds up getting three. The Tigers line up in the split backfield, and McCall will get the call on second down and seven. There's no running room at all, but he does fight for a yard to the 41. Meet Cleaver makes the tackle for Georgia. Clemson is content to run at the middle of the dog defense. Third and six now, Jordan will call his own number again. He keeps right, moves forward for a couple to the 39. Terry Hogue comes up from his safety spot to stop Homer there. The clock is now under seven minutes. Georgia has 12 men on the field and the dogs are going to be forced to take their final timeout. That is a critical mistake for Georgia because the dogs have no timeouts left. There's no decision for Coach Ford. Hatcher comes back into punt. He wants to pin the dogs inside the 10 if he could. He gets off a good kick and it will roll down to the Bulldogs seven yard line. It's officially a 32 yard punt for Hatcher. Buck Ballou is backed up against his own goal. Time is becoming a problem for Georgia. There's only 6.34 to go. Buck looks deep for Brown. He goes through his hands and tips into the hands of Clemson corner Anthony Rose, who's there for another interception. It's the eighth Georgia turnover. He'll bring it back to the Bulldog 33-yard line. Jordan lines his Tigers up in the eye set. He's gonna pass, he fires for Tuttle, but it's no good, he overshot him. 
He might have just thrown that one away. Williams was covering for Georgia. That'll leave it at second and 10 from the 33. The Tigers are illegally in motion, and that'll cost Clemson five yards. Back to the 38. It's second and 15. Jordan options left. He'll keep it himself. Homer is credited with a seven-yard gain. He's down at the 31-yard line. Taylor makes the tackle for the dogs. Don't forget Homer is from Athens, Georgia, and this game is huge for him. Third and eight, Clemson's in the eye. McCall takes the handoff, and he's got running room. He bulls ahead to the 24-yard line. He drags Georgia tacklers Taylor and Jones down the field. Clemson is within a half a yard of a first down. It's fourth and about 18 inches, and the Tigers are going for it. Jordan has the Tigers in the eye. He hands it to McSwain, and he leaps over the top to the 22. It's a gain of two, and that's enough for a first down for the Tigers. Taylor and Payne get the tackle for Georgia. Homer lines up the Tigers as the clock winds under five minutes. He'll keep it himself. He has some running room left. He's chased out of bounds at the 14, but there's a flag on the field, and this one is going against the Tigers. It's clipping, and that will bring the football all the way back to the 29-yard line. It'll still be first down, but the Tigers now need 17 yards to convert. Perry Tuttle was called for the clip. Tigers are in the eye, double tight ends. McCall takes the handoff from Jordan and dives straight ahead. George's Lindsay stacks him up at the 28 after a pickup of one. Second and 16 from the 28. Homer will keep it this time around right end, but Weaver is there for the tackle at the 27. Clemson has third and 15. The Tigers are in the eye, double tight ends. The Tigers play it safe with McCall, taking the handoff and going right. He gets three to the 24, where Weaver makes another tackle. It's fourth and 12, and Coach Ford will send in Igwe Bike for the field goal try. He doesn't hit this one very well, and it's going to fall short and wide right. It was butterflying from the time it left his foot. Only 2.46 to go. Georgia will take over at its own 24. Blue will have to work a miracle for Georgia to extend its winning streak. His pass is for Scott, but it's underthrown. Childers is there defensively. Buck is rolling and looking for Jones this time. He's got him open and he brings it in and moves it to the 42. First down, Georgia. Kennard makes the tackle for Clemson. First and 10 from the 42. Ballou is looking for his tight end, Brown. He's hit by Kennard and drops it. It's incomplete. Great play by Kennard. Ballou checks the Tigers' defense, and he's rolling to his left. He can't find an open receiver. He's keeping it and makes it to the 49, where Triplett stops him for Clemson. Ben has chased him out of the pocket. It's third and three from the Georgia 49. Ballou is searching for Lindsey Scott this time, and he's got him for a nine-yard gain and a first down at the Clemson 42. Childers pushes him out of bounds there. Georgia is trying desperately to try to get back into the game. Ballou fires again. He's got Clarence K. And the big tight end motors ahead to the Tiger 25. Suttle brings him down at that point. It's first and 10, 138 to go. Ballou is looking for Jones. It's underthrown and incomplete. Second and 10 from the 25. Ballou is going back to Norris Brown, but Jeff Davis breaks it up. A big hit by Davis, knocks it loose, third and 10. Big William Perry decks Ballou on the play, and Buck gets up slowly. Buck is going for it all on third down. He throws for Lindsey Scott in the end zone, but Rod McSwain is there at the back of the end zone to pick it off. It's intercepted by McSwain. That's the ninth Georgia turnover. That's a Clemson record. That's a Georgia record for futility. There's only 109 to go, and the Tigers just have to take a couple of snaps. Jordan will just kneel down at the 19. The clock is ticking away, and Clemson will only have to take one more snap. 
Jordan again takes the snap, falls down on the ball. The celebration has begun. The Tigers have upset the defending national champs 13 to three. This is the first time Clemson has ever beaten a top 10 team. It's only the fourth time Clemson has ever played a top 10 team. The fans storm the field. It's a great day to be a Clemson Tiger. Thanks to an opportunistic defense, a ball controlling offense and a superior kicking game, Clemson has prevailed over Vince Dooley's Bulldogs. This will certainly be remembered as one of Clemson's greatest games.